There's two of us today, guys, and we're gonna do a breakdown of everything we used this week on the Thousand Island Open tournament uh, that we did this week. So, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, let's get into it. How's it going, guys? Travis here from Tackle Bros, AKA Tackle Prez on Instagram. And I am with... Ashton, underscore, no, oh. GTR, <laughs> underscore 46 on Instagram. That works, that's me. You gotta get more used to being on video. Oh no, it's tough. It's tough. Usually behind the camera, uh, Ashton is actually my fishing partner in this tournament. We do it every year. This is our third year in a row. Um, so yeah, I thought this would be something cool that we could do a little bit differently um, and just kind of break down, you know, sort of what happened. Uh, first of all, though, congrats to Evan and Ryan on their back-to-back -back win. It's pretty tough to do out there. There's a lot of good sticks in this tournament. Um, also, congrats to Nick Kuzvis with a 24 and a half pound bag, and that's four fish, guys. He. Uh, Great. That's 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 great. That's a big bag. That's got to be the biggest four fish bag ever weighed in. It maybe on Lake Ontario, definitely in that tournament. So, huge shout out to Nicky. He's uh he's really one of those. He's he's probably one of the best big fish guys on Lake Ontario. I would you know. Yeah, he's a big fish guy. Yeah, like I mean, yeah, one of the best big fish guides I I 100%. know of anyway. So, uh, yeah, congrats to those guys, and then uh, congrats to us. Yeah, congrats to us. We beat the boys in the house which is pretty cool. Uh, so we we do this every year. Uh, we rent the same house every year. We stay with the same guys every year. It's uh, us, and then we stay with Chrissy and BR. Uh, BR used to work in the store, if you guys ever came in, you know, last year and the year before. Uh, he kind of spent the summers with us. And then um, Eagle, who is a very good friend of ours, he's also our sales rep for Daiwa and Garmin. He also stays with us with our good friend Travis, who is my, like, my contractor. Yeah. So we're all very good friends. We all stay in the same house. Uh, and, you know, number one goal is to make sure that you beat the other guys in the house. And then everything else from there is icing on the cake, which, I mean, two years running. Two years running, the boys got it done. And we came back from P3 this year. So it was tough. Yeah. Day one, no boat. Last in the house. Yep. Could have been last in the tournament. Though. Yep. Well, we were bubble boy day one. We were bubble boy day one. Yeah. So basically, Thousand Island Open is a three day tournament. It's Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Uh, only the top 38 fish on day three. So you need to be in the top 38. And after day one, we had some boat issues. We had the troll motor batteries die on us. I don't know what happened. Like, did we not plug it in? Something happened. Something so weird happened. Maybe it got pulled. Um, and then the trim switch, we took a lot of water over the front. Because and, of the troll motor dying. Yeah. So we were, we had Ashton running the big motor while I was trying to fish off the front just to salvage the day together. Uh, which means we were kind of nosing into a lot of, a lot of, I mean, they were a lot of big waves. They were big. So that kind of messed up the front panel a little bit by taking on too much water, which caused our trim to lift out of the water, which is not fun when you don't have a trolling motor and there's big waves crashing down on you. Yeah. But we got it sorted out. We got back to launch safely. And uh, what did we have the first day? First day we had 16 something. So yes. we just scraped up. <clears throat> With a four pound average. Yeah, so we, I think we had 16 and a half. 16.58. Um, right. So we had 16.58 and we were sitting right at 38. So again, only top 38 guys make it to the third day. Um, we were, we were pretty, we we're pretty sat after day one. Cause I, th I thought we could catch around 20 pounds a day. I never thought we were really on winning fish. No, but we were, we were there to top 10. So. Yeah, we should have been top yeah. 10 for sure. Um, the deeper fish, man, they were just, a little bit too finicky for us. And then I knew it was gonna blow, so we kind of switched strategies and went kind of mid to shallow depth. Um, and that's kind of where we, we spent the time, right? Yeah. Uh, we basically fished, you know, five areas, uh, two main areas and then two that we would go to to just try to get a bigger fish Not off of. Fish here there. Right. Um, and yeah, that's what we did. Okay, so then day two, we had a little bit better bag. Yeah. We had 19, 19 and a half? 19. 42. Right. 1940 something, yeah. Yeah, that's where I kind of figured we would be in that 19 to 20 and a half pound range, somewhere in there every day. Uh, and that was, honestly, that was the goal. I We never found like that six, six and a half pound caliber fish no. in practice. We were just kind of, all right, we can get some five, fives and a half to go and and we'll just hope for the best and, and maybe someone slips up a day or two and we can bump up a little bit. Again, that main goal is to beat the guys in the house, which we obviously got done. So. Day one, we were third in the house. Day two, we were second in the house. And then we close it out day, day three, three with, how, how big is our bag? 
Just shy of 19. But it, it should have been over 19. Yeah. Let's tell them. Let's tell them. All right. <clears throat> so we had 19. What was it? Like 19 and a quarter. 19 and a quarter. All right. Day started off early. We had a limit really quickly. You know, small ones, like three pound or stuff like that. Just yep. bought a quick bag. Actually, first fish was five and a half. That's true. First fish was a big fish, five and a half. And then we just filled a quick limit. And then finally, after a lot of hours of waiting, the bite turned back on. And Trav caught a fish. It was like a five. It was another five and a half. It was a bit of five and a half. Five and a half. He goes to call out a fish. We had a four and a 330 in the box. And then I always deal with the live well care. Yep. But for whatever reason, I was up there fishing. And he's like, which fish do I throw out? I told him the fish in the left. It was a tiny fish. I he, triple confirmed with you. Trim, he did triple confirm with me. He's like, are you sure it's that fish? I'm like, 100% is that fish. Tossed that fish off and called it. About an hour goes by and I'm like, that fish he threw out seemed kind of big. So I'm like, didn't say nothing. Went back, double checked and opened up the right box. And I saw a three pounder in there that should have been thrown out. So I did cost us about a three quarter pound cull. Only two positions, though. Oh, yeah. So we would have been 58 for <clears throat> two positions, but yep. nonetheless, a, a really bad mistake to make uh, in a tournament. So, yep, exactly. Would have had would have had 19 and a half or just a bit over if we called properly. Yes. All right. So that's kind of the story of of the tournament. We finished 17th. Yep. Um, again, not 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 a great showing for us. Uh, we were I think we came seventh last year. Seventh last year. Yeah. So. A, a bit disappointing, but again, a great week nonetheless. And the guys that fish this tournament are some of the best guys on Lake Ontario. Uh, the weather on day one was brutal. We we fought waves all day long. Everyone fought waves all day long. Like there was, I didn't even know how many troll motors got broken that day. It was crazy. I know of at least five guys that lost their troll motors. Right. Um, there were some long runs made by guys and. And yeah, I'm ha thankful everybody made it home okay. And then day two and day two and three were pretty good. I mean, a little a little sporty there at the end of yeah. day three and day two, but yeah, that was it. But well, we love the waves. We do. We needed we needed yeah, win for our deal. Yeah. So um, yeah, let's talk about what we caught them on. Yeah. Um, you did some more unique stuff. I did a little bit more standard stuff. So number one thing that we were catching them on, Okashira Scritch. Hold yours up because you actually do something a little bit differently than me. Uh, so Mega Bass, Okashira, Screwhead, Spark Shad combo. Mine's all chewed up here. Yeah, so same. We just cut these off. So you'll notice that Ashton's have single eyes. I have double eyes. I don't think it matters. You do. I just have confidence in the single eyes right. when it comes to a smaller bait like this. So yep. for whatever reason, it just in my own head, I just take the eyes off. I yep. just need single eyes on these guys. Yeah, so this was probably our number one producer. I mean, I... I knew this going into it. That's why we put out the videos. We were have we had a really good Okashira bite for the last you know three, three weeks. weeks. Yeah. yeah, like really really good. We've been going out there every weekend, taking some guests out. We also we also do you know we like to do boys trips where everybody goes up and we hang out and that's just a fun place for everybody to go catch four pounders. Okashira was our number one deal. Yep. Uh, we caught that last five and a half pounder on this guy, yep. which was a savior. That's kind of our first deal. Uh, I was throwing it on my Flissa. You guys know how much I love the Flissa. Have multiples in the boat now because I didn't think that having two was enough. Got a third. And uh, yep. yeah, we just kept this rolling. I actually switched between the white head and the black head. I don't know what was going on for whatever reason. They would turn off on the white. I'd switch to the black. They'd eat it. So that was, uh, that was a yeah. cool deal. Um, what were you throwing on? I was throwing on a Conquest 902. 902, okay. Uh, great rod. Great rod. I love that rod. 7.6 medium white. Right. It's actually medium. Oh, yeah. It's not a 901. It's yep. Yeah. Yep. Number two way, and this was something that was it used to be the only way you could really catch them and i think i don't know if it's because of pressure time of year we were talking with a bunch of guys at the end of the weigh-ins uh and everyone seemed to be struggling getting them on a drop shot now we were doing something a little bit different you know traditionally a hazardong shot is pretty good out there uh, it's a little i mean do we have one handy might have one handy over here yep so hazardong shad a little three inch Paddle tail swim bait, nose hook drop shot them. It's kind of always been the deal. This year, the second that the drop shot got anywhere near them, they scurried off. It was crazy to watch. They, man. they just take off. If you can put it pretty close to them or like in front of their path, I mean, before it was like eight or to 10 fish. Now it felt like one or to 20 fish would even kill it. They, sometimes they jolt right up to it and then they hit the brakes and swim away. 
It, it, it was a little funky. I, I'm hoping it's weather related or time of year or something, but I think they're getting a little bit conditioned to it. So after we figured out that the kind of, the Hasdong wasn't really doing its thing, we went to some of our other favorite drop shot baits. So I went over to a Great Lakes Finesse drop minnow. Uh, this is the smaller size. Uh, I only threw black. This is my, this is one of the th things that I like about GLF. Again, matte black finish. I don't know why fish are attracted to black baits. Um, they they eat them pretty good. So we caught a, a couple key fish on this guy. And then the other thing I was doing, which was actually a big fish producer for us, was throwing the OSP rubber dice. Non-salt specifically. I think that the more high float, yeah. instead of having that salt, was kind of keeping slow, it up yeah. a little bit yeah, and slow yeah exactly uh just had more of a natural movement in the water i threw the salt it it just they weren't eating it it was it was weird but the non-salt came into play and this was actually my probably my number one drop shot bait yeah the probably whole time. number one producer okay and then you did something a little well you did you did a couple different things which is why i liked fishing with ashton ashton is always on the back of the boat trying new baits and trying, you know, a little bit weirder techniques, which it's nice to have in a tournament partner because one guy is gonna throw the stuff that like time in, time out is always gonna oh. work. And then if you have another guy maybe throwing bigger profiles, which we're obviously gonna get into, or different shapes and styles of baits, you can learn a lot about that body of water and kind of key in on something new before it becomes a big hype train like the Hazard on Chad has. So let's let them know what you're catching them on. I always use the D style Varola 2.8. Yep. I love these baits. These are neutral buoyant, has eyes on them. I could dead stick these things forever. Yep. I paired it up with a Medusa, uh, a Roach X10. So when I shook that rod, even when dead sticking, that bait would roll in place and just get a couple extra bites. Absolutely love this bait when I need to dead stick. Yeah, that's a that's a it's a really cool bait. D Style is one of your favorite brands, man. D Style is one of my use, favorite brands. Use a lot of their stuff. Yeah. Um, what was your other drop shot bait? Uh, the Duba also from D Style. Use that one a lot. And at you the end it. there, I use the OSP. Wait, wait, don't show them. Oh. Don't show them. Yeah. That one's from Thursday. Oh, Thursday. 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 We'll talk about the color on Thursday. We'll talk about the color. We'll talk about the color on Thursday. We'll just give you a little reference now. So you were using. The color we're going to talk about on Thursday, and then camo. And then camo. Okay. Yeah. So OSP, Dole Life Pro, three inch. I was drop shotting these baits, um, and they just got bit when nothing ba else would. Yeah, basically, we had a couple slick flat calm all days. The second the wind turned on, uh, we kind of beat them up pretty good on the standard stuff, and then we would switch it completely up. Uh, you went to the Dole Life Craws. Um, I went to, that's that's kind of when I got off the dice and I went to the Great Lakes Finesse. Uh, and we seemed to catch a couple extra fish. We actually caught a fair amount of fish every day. We did. We did catch a lot of fish every day. Yeah, we were just missing that right bite, like those, you know, five plus pound class every day. The last day we had two big ones and then that little baby one, but. We, we also did lose a lot of fish day three. Yeah, which you guys are going to see in the video that we're going to release probably. I'm going to need some time. All right, so yeah. a couple weeks, we'll say. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, that was number two. Uh, so that was drop shotting. I was using between an 821 and an 822. A uh, zillion 610ML. Yep. Okay, and right. Medusa. The and the Medusa. Yep. Yeah, I like that Medusa, man, because you can do a lot of different stuff with it. Yeah. And we found out when we were filming with it originally that it turned into being a really, really cool drop shot rod. Right. So uh, yeah, that was cool that you were using that. Number three is, I mean, this is one that I've talked about Again, quite a bit recently. I was catching them wacky rig style on the 4.8 bellows stick. I would actually Nico rig these, so pop a little weight in the end. And this was when I was targeting fish. So if I could see a fish on live scope or sometimes it was calm enough we could actually yeah. physically see them, I would, yeah, I would pitch this guy out there and they would either run up to it and eat it or they would run up to it and run away. If I moved it at all, I felt like they didn't eat it. Sometimes I even had them eat it off bottom. And right now the bottom's pretty scummed up. Oh, like yeah. we're not dragging. I'm a big, I like dragging out there. Right now it's not possible. So there was a bit of a challenge to talk myself into just leaving it on the bottom. And you kind of have to slack line as well because 
you can't move it at all. Like if you put tension on that line and it lifts it a little bit, it'll, they, it'll scum up. Yeah. Well, they weren't eating it. No. Cause the bait would move and then they would just, they'd be gone. So this caught us some nice fish as well. This is just a great one, especially sight fishing and specific targeting certain fish. And then we went deep for a good portion of, well, we started deep in day one. Yep. And then day two, we started deep as well. We did pull a couple key fish and you pulled one of our key fish off with oh, yeah. something that we actually haven't used out there until this trip. Until that day. Yeah, so we couldn't get baits as far away from the boat or as deep as we wanted. The wind was just, if you try to pitch out there in the wind and the current, uh, by the time, you know, you could see the fish, your bait was already way over here. So we were having a lot of difficulty doing that. And I think a lot of guys that were fishing deep were as well. Uh, so we kind of came up with, you did, uh, a little solution to get the baits down quicker and just give them a different profile. And yeah. Use the five inch spark shot yep. with the Nishine smelt head. Oh, there you go. Yep. Five inch spark shad um, with the Nishine smelt head. Yep. So the heaviest we had in the boat was a three seventh. Yep. Correct? Yep. Yep. Uh, it seemed to get the job done. You caught. I mean, a five and a quarter with that. You caught a four and a half with it. With it. Yeah. Right. And again, like you'll notice Ashton is a big guy with not using those eyes. So the Nishine has a great reflective eye on it. Uh, 90 degree line tie, five inch spark shad. And yeah, giant smallmouth eat this thing really good. Color is albino. Albino. Al you can see like we, albino was kind of the color that we keyed in on. Um, that was that would seem to be what they were eating a little bit better that day. Again, we didn't we didn't quite get the job done, but we had a great time. Amazing week as always. Yeah, really really great week of the boys. Yeah, and and this is maybe just a reminder that you know sometimes things don't go as planned, but if you if you kind of stick with it, you can still move up. We still cut a check, which is pretty cool. Okay. And uh, yeah, we caught them on some some new stuff that we don't generally throw out there. Like a five inch spark shad is a big meal for a fish, and it seemed to only catch the bigger ones. Yes which was really cool. So if you guys like this style of video, let us know in the comments and we'll do them after we do tournaments. 100%. Uh, we just kind of, we we're just kind of thinking of something to put out today. And this is, this is what we came up with. I thought it was a good idea. It's a pretty good idea. Let, let everyone know what we're catching them on and how they can do better out there. There you go. So we'll, uh, we'll see you guys later.